Welcome to the fourth video of a short series uh, using SimSolid for AEC applications and workflows. In the previous video, we looked at how we can set up our analysis with different loads, boundary conditions, and more uh, to run an analysis on this 3D solid geometry in SimSolid. Now we're going to look at actually running the analysis and performing some post-processing. We're doing a linear static analysis. And for this application here, we just have a single load uh, case that we're analyzing, but it's certainly possible to do more than just that. So what I'm going to do now that I've set up my boundary conditions, my material properties, and my loads, I'm just going to click the analysis button or the solve button here to start the analysis. So I'll click this button and you can see this is all in real time. SimSolid is performing the analysis. And if we just look at the results info here, we can see that the total runtime for this uh, 3D solid geometry took only five seconds to complete the analysis. And now I can look at some of the results. And that is something that we will see out of SimSolid is just the ability to go from a 3D CAD geometry to an analysis result within minutes. And I use that term uh, perhaps even more conservatively. We perform this analysis in just five seconds. So here I can look at some of the results. For example, I might want to look at contours. I can look at the displacement contours. Um, I'll just look at the um, magnitudes of displacements that we're looking at. And here I can see how the model is deforming uh, based on the applied loads. So we can see that we're not getting very large deflections for the most part, uh, but we are clearly getting something. Uh, and we can actually display where the maximum and minimum displacements are. So at the end of this double angle section here, we're getting some uh, fairly high displacements relative to the rest of the model, uh, 8.7 millimeters or so, uh, and much less here, um, obviously, right next to our support. Now we can change our settings, we can change how the displays are, or the renderings are amplified to show the deflected shape, because obviously this is not to scale, uh, just to show us for visual uh, effect here. We might also be interested in looking at something like stress plots. So here I can look at my von Mises stress plots, for example. And just like before, I can see my maximums and minimums and observe where those are located. And in this example, we can see here that we are actually getting some fairly high stresses uh, at this short weld here on the bottom uh, that came in from our 3D CAD geometry. And much less welds, uh, or much less stress elsewhere in the model. Now I can change how this scale uh, or this uh, legend is uh, displayed. So I might want to set up a maximum and minimum. And perhaps these colors will be a little bit more apparent uh, now that they don't have those local hotspots that are kind of dictating the, uh, the legend color distribution. And it's very clear to me, again, where the concentrations of uh, uh, stress are much higher than others. Now we can pick any point in the model and we can observe, for example, the stresses at that location. And I can see the stresses, displacements, and more. I may also want to look at, for example, uh, bolt forces. So I have all these bolts and nuts in my model that I can look at here. I can look at the associated forces uh, so I can sort them. If I want to look at the one with the highest axial force on the head, for example, and I can see this particular bolt uh, has uh, the highest axial force, about 2.6 kilonewtons. And I can zoom into that bolt as well. And I can see that it's at the end of one of my double angle sections. And I think that was the one with the highest stress or deflection, sorry. So perhaps that comes as no surprise. Now there are plenty of other result viewing tools available depending on your application. We are going to go into the next video uh, a little bit more detail on some of the advanced features, uh, specifically focusing on uh, contact conditions between elements, which we'll look at uh, in just the next video.